My name is Tony Swanton. I'm a blacksmith. I make suits of armor and swords. My business is making weapons for movies, video games, television shows, commercials, all of that. So it's very exciting to have Blizzard Entertainment approach me to recreate War Glaives of Azanoth. So in the lore of World of Warcraft, Illidan Stormrage wields the War Glaives of Azanoth. Illidan was originally a night elf, but after consuming the skull of Gul'dan, he transformed into a powerful demon. You are not prepared! To create this weapon, there's gonna be over 50 separate parts. These blades are gonna be about an inch and a half thick. I'm not gonna make this solid. This thing would weigh 300 pounds. So we're gonna make this hollow, but we're gonna have a core of hardened steel for the cutting edge. The center shield here will have a handle going across the back, and I'm gonna be cutting four emerald cabochons that get set in here. This is gonna be a fun challenge. I just can't wait to start. All right. We're gonna cut out the skins of our blades. One of the beneficial aspects of a Beverly shear is you're actually able to follow curved lines. All right, and there we have our cut out of our skin. I'm gonna bring it over to the Pullmax machine and just put a little bit of form in here. And I'm gonna hand it back to uh, Douglas and he's gonna come back in with chisels. Pretty close. Next step, we're just gonna take and uh, cut off the edge here. This is razor sharp. If I slip on this, this is gonna cut it to the bone, through arteries, skin, tendons, everything else. This rusty piece of metal that looks like nothing is the integral spine of these war glaives. My design element of this is uh, finished. This. Another way to think of a plasma cutter is to imagine a lightsaber. Uh, it's going to slice through anything. The chromoly steel that Brian has cut out with plasma cutter, and that will get clamped on here. And Chris will uh, TIG weld everything together. All right, this blade's looking pretty awesome. Tony has drawn out our center shield on the 16 gauge, so now we're going to cut that out. Now I dome it out on the Pullmax machine, so it's got a little bit more shape here. I've done an oversized uh, shield for the center here. I'll trim down the edges. The Warglaive blades are much too large to heat treat in-house, but as an example, this will go into the forge. I'll pull it out, quench it in the oil, just to show you how this looks. It's pretty cool. Take the belt grinder, grind off the excess weld. Well, I'm gonna soften this metal. Right now, I can barely bend it, it's really springy. I'm going to heat it up to a red heat and quench it. I'm gonna cool this rapidly in this vat of acid below me. When I pull it out of the acid, it'll be clean and very soft and malleable, and I'll be able to work with it. On the center portion of our shield, we have 25 separate elements, like this element corresponds to the bottom piece that'll go into the hydraulic press, and that 100,000 pounds of pressure will squash this into the brass, and this brass will now look identical to this. So we've got the freshly pressed brass. I'm gonna have Alicia trim it up and match it like a jigsaw puzzle over the center of the shield. Doesn't have to be very clean. I'm gonna take it to Tony on the grinder afterwards and he's gonna make sure that it looks really good. See, it's hollow, very lightweight brass, but it's gonna look like solid, thick brass, hence keeping the weight down. Here I have three different length jeweler saws I'm gonna be using for our shield. I'm just gonna follow the lines that I have on this pattern. All right, one down, 20 more to go. I now need to dome it to match the contour of the shield here. And the rest with a rawhide mallet. We don't want to mash it with a steel-faced hammer. It's getting there. This is uh, looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm making a bezel for this. It's going to give me a nice uniform ring. And we're going to dome the top edge of it so that it holds the stone so the stone doesn't slip out. 
Next time you see this, it'll have a green gemstone in it. This is the first time all these pieces have been assembled together perfectly like a jigsaw puzzle, and I'm pretty happy with the results. I've just uh, used this diamond saw here to slice out a uh, block of green glass. That'll be the center stone. The next step is I'm going over to the grinder here. I'm cutting these stones in a cabochon form, which means that they're just a dome. There are no facets. A little demonic jewel happening there. Stick a fork in me, because I'll be done. <laughs> next step I'll do is fit up the wooden handles for this. This is half inch by about two inch wide slabs of red oak. And I'll take one side of this and wrap it with stingray skin. And this is real stingray. It's super strong. This is one of the strongest leathers out there. Decorative, functional, demonic. These screws will hold the whole war glaive together. This is the last big step before we start going out and smashing stuff with this. I'm gonna set 10 pop rivets that will hold the blades to the shield. Let's see where we're at. Right about 20 pounds, this thing's gonna kick some demon butt. This beauty's finished, let's go cut some stuff. Oh!